Hey, what's up, folks? In this video, I'll be going over my round eight from the 2021 Vegas Open. And yeah, this was a pretty interesting game. It was uh, the longest game I played of the tournament. And this was against a player named Paul Iunuma, I believe from Hawaii. And um, yeah, very, very tough game. I had to work really hard uh, in this one. This is the final day of the tournament, round eight, penultimate round. And of course, the day before, I had lost two games uh, during day four. So that was kind of tough. And yeah, I really had to kind of like dig in for some energy for this game because I knew it was going to be like a tough game uh, in, in this tournament. And um, yeah, if I wanted to win, I, I, I felt like I would really have to work hard for it. So I started with 1d4 and uh, I don't have a, I didn't have like a huge expectation of what my opponent was going to do. I believe I looked him up online quickly and I saw that he was playing many different openings. So I didn't have time to do any really special preparation. Um, I decided to go with my usual d4, c4. He plays the Slav. I played knight c3 here, knight f6, e3. And uh, now black goes into a semi-Slav. Of course, black has lots of other options there. But um, eventually, through uh, this move order, we get the classic semi-Slav. Uh, and here, my opponent played a6, which is a pretty solid line. Um, the main line is to go knight d7. But a6, I remember, was played quite a bit by um, Anand in his World Championship match against Gelfand. And yeah, it has a very solid reputation. And honestly, I haven't looked at it too much. Um, but I knew the setup I wanted to play here. So I played b3. Uh, Black throws in bishop b4, which I think is an accurate move because it forces bishop d2. If bishop b2, I think white has problems with like knight e4 and queen a5. Uh, and these moves come very quickly. So it's important for white to break the pin right away. Knight d7, bishop d3 castles, castles. Uh, and here black plays bishop d6 because white is actually threatening after castling to play uh, knight takes d5 uh, in many positions and kind of winning uh, material because after bishop takes d2 there's going to be knight takes f6 check and then recapturing the bishop on uh, d2. So I think usually black plays either queen e7 here or in this game uh, black decided to go bishop to d6. And here I'm already on my own uh, I think what I'm supposed to do is play e4. I believe this is the main theory. During the game, I wasn't sure if I should play this right away. So after some thought, I decided to uh, start with h3 first. And uh, this move simply prepares e4 because it's kind of useful for white to have this g4 square under control. Uh, now black played b5. And yeah, here I'm like really kind of thinking on my own here. And I thought about e4, which I believe is the strongest move in the position. Um, but I didn't quite see what to do in case black played b4. Because if black just takes on e4, then I think white is happy because we get our bishop to e4. This pawn on uh, c6 is pretty weak. And in general, I, I really like the structure for white when you kind of get more space. It's hard for black to get c5 in. I might play c5 myself one day once the bishop gets to b7. And yeah, black just kind of suffers with this really bad light scored bishop. So that would have been great for white. But my issue was that black could play b4 attacking the knight and uh, hit the pawn on e4. And I was trying to calculate e5 here, uh, but I just couldn't make it work because I thought if b takes c3, bishop takes c3, then black has this very strong move knight e4, hitting the bishop. And uh, if I take d takes e4, I'm still down a piece here and I'm just going to end up down a piece because uh, knight on f3 is hanging. So uh, I tried to make this work a little bit. I even considered like b takes c3, bishop e1, so that the bishop isn't hanging on c3 and then I still am getting my piece back. But I just wasn't sure about this position. Like, to me, it didn't look clear that white is better here. As I found out after the game, it turns out this is uh, the engine's choice, is to go e4 and against b4. Um, there's actually this move, knight takes d5, which I also didn't consider, uh, followed by e5, and then white gets the piece back and I think has a reasonably good structure. Uh, material will be equal, but I think white is going to be slightly better there. Or white can go for this line with e5 takes and bishop e1, which I just discarded as like being too weird. But <laughs> yeah, I think actually white is doing pretty well here. Um, because for example, after bishop e7, once we take on f6 and black recaptures, one day we'll be able to take back the c3 pawn. And we're left with a structure where black just has kind of weak pawns on the queen side with a6 and c6. Light square bishop is still bad and not a lot of compensation for these factors. So I think white would just be better here. So yeah, I ended up missing my chance for an opening advantage. I played the move queen c2 here, which I think is just kind of a normal move, but somewhat unambitious. Um, because now black is able to take on c4, and he takes a second time, and then goes c5. 
And here, yeah, I started to get kind of worried because if black is able to execute this move safely, then black is just going to equalize because the bishop will be really strong on the long diagonal. And once these pawns get traded off, white has no space advantage and basically no advantage of any kind because the structure is going to be almost uh, identical, even very, very symmetrical. So yeah, I started spending some time here. I realized, okay, my only chance to get anything in this position is to just try to make use of my very, very small lead in development. So I play this move rook ab1, and the point is to just make it harder for black to uh, develop the bishop to b7. Uh, he goes queen c7, which ends up being actually a mistake. During the game, I thought this was totally fine, um, but I think black should play c takes d4 first, and then go uh, queen c7, bishop b7, and kind of play like this. After queen c7, I didn't quite realize white's um, opportunities here at all. I ended up playing bishop e2, just to get the bishop off of the attack and to maybe think about transferring it to f3 one day. Um, but yeah, apparently I could have made this move d5 here. There's actually a couple ways for white to get an advantage according to the engine, and um, they're kind of interesting because I, I definitely misevaluated both. A d5 I didn't really consider at all in this position because of the move knight to b6, and indeed d5 is not a good move if on knight b6 white doesn't see the right response because the bishop is hanging, pawn on d5 is hanging, and what you have to see to sh prove the advantage here is you have to see this move knight e4, which of course the engine finds very quickly, and this doesn't look like anything special at first, but uh, after knight takes e4, the real point is that white has to just ignore this and play this move bishop to a5, pinning the knight on b6. And so once you start to see these kinds of tactics, uh, to me I'm just like, okay, these are engine moves, <laughs> there's no way, like, uh, you could find this over the board. It's a very cool idea, but yeah, just very, very unexpected. After knight e4, black doesn't really have time to take on c4, uh, because then white takes on f6, and black structure ends up very, very weak on the king side, and white is doing great here. And yeah, after knight e4, knight takes e4, bishop a5, uh, basically white pins this knight on b6, and then after rook to b8, I can recapture the knight on e4, and black is under huge pressure, the knight on b6 is pinned, we got like bishop d3 coming, and yeah, there's tons of tactics still in the position, um, but uh, it seems like white is doing pretty well here. So this one, yeah, I just fully did not even consider this knight e4 bishop a5 idea, I thought d5 knight b6, and that's the end of the variation. And then the other move that uh, also gives white an advantage is this move knight to e4, which I definitely considered, but I thought, okay, black will take on e4, queen takes e4, go rook to b8, and then I, I kept thinking in this position, I thought maybe I would trade here and go rook to b1 and take over the b-file. But after queen c7, yeah, I just didn't really fully feel white's advantage here, um, which is definitely inaccurate because white is better. Uh, black has a hard time developing the pieces and white can continue by like trying to create some weaknesses on the king side. I think the engine suggests this move like bishop to d3 here. The point is just to attack this pawn. Uh, if knight f6, the queen can transfer to h4, and white is just putting a lot of pressure here and has ideas of like knight to g5. So yeah, the engine calculates this one out to being good for white, but yeah, over the board, it's kind of hard to really convince yourself that all this is working and white is actually getting an advantage and not just trading pieces. So yeah, I really wasn't sure. So I ended up just playing kind of the calm move bishop to e2 and just kind of keeping the tension, but yeah, losing out on any chance of uh, an opening advantage. So cd4, knight takes d4, bishop b7, uh, rook fc1, and this move took me a little time to make because it's a very natural move, but of course I had to be ready for bishop a3, which kind of makes things uh, tricky for white. But I had a nice little trap here. If bishop a3, I was going to play rook to d1, and I thought at first glance maybe it looks like black has e5, attacking the knight, and then bishop e4 ideas, um, because the queen on c2 is going to be undefended. So for example, if e5 and then I play something like knight b3, then maybe there's like bishop e4. Queen is undefended, so I can't go knight takes e4. I'd have to go like bishop to d3 and allow black to trade some pieces, and it seems like it should be okay for black. Um, but I realized in this position after e5, I would have the really nice tactical idea knight a4, where I just open up attacks on all of black's pieces, and after queen takes c2, knight takes c2, Bishop on a3 is still hanging, bishop on b7 is hanging, so black ends up losing uh, material in this variation. And after knight a4, there's not really a whole lot black can do because queen is hanging, and then the bishop on b7 is hanging uh, as well. So that was a little trap. Black doesn't fall for it. Instead, just plays rook fc8. And um, now, yeah, I was thinking here for a little bit. My first thought was queen to b3, 
just hitting the bishop and also opening up my rook against black's queen. And yeah, my only kind of chance I thought for an advantage here was to just try to make use of my like slight, very, very slight, at this point, almost non-existent uh, lead in development. But I thought I still have a little bit of an edge here because I am putting pressure on this bishop on b7 and uh, black needs basically owes me a tempo to go rook a b8 and totally solidify. So I felt like I had some time here. And yeah, my first thought was queen b3, but then knight c5, I thought just kind of defends very comfortably and with tempo. And I thought queen b3, knight c5, okay, maybe there I go queen to d1. And I try to like put pressure on the knight on the c file with like knight a4. Then I thought, okay, why don't I just go queen d1 immediately? And then black has all the same issues with the queen on the c file and bishop on b7 hanging. So I end up realizing, okay, I should go queen d1 right away. And now it's really not so easy for black because uh, I have some powerful discoveries in mind, like knight b5, knight d5 and stuff. So the queen definitely doesn't want to stay on c7, but of course has to keep the bishop defended. So really not an easy position for black to play. Uh, my opponent ends up playing knight c5. I think the only move to equalize was queen b8, which is just a very tough move to make because you're just putting yourself in a pin. feels like you're disconnecting your rooks. Uh, I definitely wasn't considering this move uh, for black here. So knight c5 I thought is more natural. But now after knight a4, black is starting to feel some issues because I'm possibly threatening to take on c5 and just play against the pin with moves like knight to b3. So that's the threat, knight c5, knight b3, and then black has issues on uh, the c and the b files. Uh, for example, black just makes some random move h6, we can take here, play knight to b3, and if queen e7, then we're taking everything, and at the end of the line, the bishop on b7 is hanging. So yeah, already actually it felt like problems for black. I also have the threat of knight to b6, just winning the exchange. And um, black ends up playing bishop to e4, Another move I thought was possible was knight fd7, and I don't, I don't think I had made up my mind what I was going to do here, whether I'm just going to take and play knight to b3. Um, the engine says that like bishop b4 is a much stronger move. I'm not sure if I would have come to this uh, conclusion, but it does make a lot of sense to just kind of put pressure without uh, simplifying, without trading everything off. Now knight b3 is a huge threat, and again, like black's pinned piece on the c file is just causing a lot of uh, grief. So bishop e4 was very understandable just getting the bishop out of the attack. Um, but now after rook to b4, black is continuing to experience problems because uh, I want to double rooks on the c file and put pressure on this knight and again go like knight b3 and bishop b4 and stuff. But also this bishop on e4 has now all of a sudden become a target to uh, the rook discovered attack on the fourth rank. So if black goes knight fd7 here, then I have a very simple but nice shot. Knight takes e6, followed by rook takes e4, and white is winning a uh, very clean, very important extra pawn. So all of a sudden, it's like very difficult for black to defend this position. And yeah, my opponent started tanking here because knight b6 is a big threat. Um, if he goes rook to b8, then I think minimum I can go rook bc4. I think there are other moves as well. Uh, the engine points out like I can take here and then play knight to b3, which is kind of a nice find. Once again, just putting maximum pressure on the c file. Rook takes b4, bishop takes b4, and black is losing material. Um, but I was thinking I could just go the simple rook bc4. Everything is pinned on the c file, even if the queen gets out of the way. Like if queen e7, for example, then the knight on c5 is defended. But again, I can play for like knight b3, and the rook on c8 is hanging. So very, very tough position for black. Uh, my opponent ends up spending a ton of time here, and he actually goes down to like nine minutes and finds this move queen to d8, which turns out to be the best move. So very, very strong find um, by my opponent here as he basically finds the only move to stay in the game. And at first, I, I didn't really consider this move too seriously because I thought, okay, I'm just knight b6 and I win the exchange. Then I realized, of course, his idea is on knight b6 to meet that with some kind of discovery against the rook and he's probably going to go knight to d3. And so I started to go into the tank here because I really wasn't sure what to make out of all these lines. And yeah, some really interesting complications um, pop up here. Long story short, I, I couldn't make it work. After knight b6, knight to d3, like I considered I think almost every line here, like rook takes c8, knight takes c8, bishop takes d3, you know, starting with different moves, knight takes a8. I just couldn't find lines where I'm like convincingly uh, winning. So the engine points out that, well, I'll just show you guys, for example, what I was thinking. I thought like if I take on c8 uh, with this knight, for example, uh, then I thought bishop takes b4. 
and now if I play, let's say bishop takes d3, uh, then bishop takes d2, black takes this one, and let's say after queen takes d2, black can go, I thought, bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, rook takes c8. And yeah, I thought it's kind of equal for white. Rook takes, queen takes, a6 pawn is defended, and black is fine. The engine points out that in this position, I believe, after queen takes d2, bishop takes d3, white can throw in knight c6 and is actually winning. Which I think was findable. This isn't like the craziest move I've ever seen. The point is to hit the queen, and then I have knight e7 check in almost every position. Uh, if queen c7, then yeah, knight e7 just wins the queen. And we're threatening to pick up the bishop. So it's very, very tough for black because it's hard for black to actually get the piece back. If queen e8, then white takes on d3, rook takes c8, and knight e7 uh, wins the material. So I definitely missed some stuff in the calculations here, though I do think that uh, black is actually okay here uh, with best play. The only line, according to the engine, where white is actually getting an advantage uh, was to start with rook takes c8. Then after rook takes c8, to play this very quiet move, rook b3. This one I just didn't consider at all. You know, I was mainly thinking like knight takes c8, bishop takes b4. Uh, these kinds of lines, bishop takes d3, bishop takes d2. And uh, now if queen takes d2, I think black can just take on c8 here and is doing fine. And yeah, I just didn't see how white is better. Um, so I was mainly just considering all these kind of like force captures and just couldn't make anything work. But yeah, it turns out this like crazy move rook b3 now gives white an edge. But the point that the engine sees, of course, instantly is that like, okay, black will go knight c5, counterattacking the rook once again. Uh, white can go knight takes c8, knight takes b3, queen takes b3, queen takes c8, material still equal. And now queen b6 at the end of the line, hitting the bishop and hitting this a6 pawn. White wins the a pawn, gets an extra pawn and has a big, big advantage. Something similar actually happens to this in the game, but yeah, this was quite deep for, for me. Um, and yeah, actually, according to the engine, that was the only way to kind of uh, to get an advantage for white, which means that against knight b6, knight d3, uh, everything else, black is at, at, least, uh, at least fine. Um, so yeah, after a long thought, I decided not to go for knight b6. To me, it just looked like we're just trading a bunch of pieces and, and black is okay. And I end up playing knight takes c5, uh, bishop takes c5, and rook c4. And this was just my way of just keeping some pressure in the position. Now I'm hitting the rook on c8. I thought black might try to bail out with bishop takes d4, then rook takes d4, white gets the two bishops. And I felt like, okay, I can like play this position. Maybe I'm not winning, but at least I have some advantage and I can kind of uh, play for the long-term chances here. I actually thought black should take on c5 with the rook, and I'm not sure why my opponent didn't, because to me this looked much safer to trade off one pair of rooks, and then black doesn't have to deal with the pin on the c-file. Um, but at this point, he had spent all of his time calculating earlier, he's now down to under 10 minutes, it becomes a very difficult game for black to play. So rook bc4, uh, black plays bishop a3, and this actually ends up being uh, a pretty serious mistake because now white just trades twice on c8 and then I have queen a4 at the end and I'm picking up uh, some material, I'm picking up the pawn on a6. If bishop c1 trying for some counterplay then I can go bishop takes a6 first, the queen is hit and then I can figure out what to do about the bishop on d2 and ultimately it's not that big of a deal. So yeah, black didn't have to play this bishop a3 move here but it is tough because once again if the queen tries to defend the bishop, then there's knight to b3. I think the best move is queen to f8, which I wasn't really uh, thinking about during the game, but it makes a lot of sense because it defends the bishop and keeps the rook defended as well. So on knight b3, black can just play like bishop a3 and just get out of the pin. Um, but yeah, he decides to try to break free right away, but of course this runs into queen a4, and now I'm able to win back, a, uh, or win a pawn actually, queen c5, queen takes a6. And here we just get like a totally different phase of the game. Now I felt like, okay, I won the pawn. I have a big advantage, maybe winning. And now it's time for like the conversion process. Um, and I felt like I did a reasonable job. I'll show you guys where I kind of uh, blew the win at one point and, and almost uh, let the win slip. But I, I thought I played it reasonably well from here. Uh, so h6, he, uh, black solves all the back rank issues. I play queen b5. At this point, my plan is basically I'm just trying to get the queens off, maybe trading some minor pieces off as well. 
Um, I want to be careful about which pieces I trade off because I don't want to end up with like an opposite color bishop endgame, for example, where the extra pawn wouldn't be so useful. Um, but if I can get some bishop endgame or some knight endgame with an outside pass pawn, I felt like that's going to give me really good chances to win the game. So queen d6, queen a5, bishop c5. And my idea here is just to try to start breaking the blockade with like knight b5 ideas. So bishop c5, knight b3, bishop b6, queen to b4. Again, just offering the trade, trying to take more space. Uh, black play queen c6 here and just bishop f1. Just like I'm in no rush, I'm trying to just limit black's counterplay as much as I can, keep all the threats under control, uh, not trying to hurry, and then just one day I'm going to advance uh, the a pawn. And bishop d5, a4, I'm already ready to advance the pawn to a5. Uh, knight e4 was played, I played bishop e1, <laughs> I like this construction quite a bit actually, I felt like my bishops, although passive, are defending everything on the king side, so it's very difficult for black to actually do anything, and one day he's going to run out of moves and the a pawn will just start uh, making progress. Uh, so queen c7, and yeah, this was kind of a weird move, but I quickly realized that my opponent's idea was probably to meet a5 with bishop a7, bishop b8, try to threaten a checkmate on h2, hope for me to kind of like weaken my position somehow, and then use that for counterplay. Like if I have to play g3 or something, then knight g5 can be a very annoying move, and, and so on. So I didn't want to allow this. Uh, I decided to play knight to d4, and now I'm bishop on uh, bishop a7, I have knight to b5, and I can just uh, take the thing. So bishop c5 was played, I drop back all the way queen b1, queen a7, and now queen a1. And I, I actually really like this construction as well. With the queen on a1, I felt like I can actually defend everything. I defend the back rank, so black's queen never has time to get in. I defend the knight, and I'm just supporting the pawn, so I can advance it a5, a6, and uh, the queen is actually just doing a great job from a1. And I remember seeing, I feel like, some Magnus games where he did like a similar thing, like a heavy piece queen and rook endgame where he just puts the queen on a1 and it's just like extremely well placed. So I, I feel like I picked this up from, from one of Carlson's games. Anyway, queen e7, a5, bishop a7, a6. I'm just making progress. Black has no counterplay. Uh, queen c5, I play knight b5, bishop d6, and queen a3. So just offering the queen trade. Now at this point, I thought black was going to just go super active with queen to c2 here. And I was going to try to... I don't remember exactly what I was thinking during the game. I was maybe going to throw an a7 or possibly continue uh, to try to harass black's queen with like queen d3 uh, or something like this. I remember wanting to be very careful because I didn't want to allow black's queen uh, to the back rank, but I also felt like with my queen on b4, I could kind of keep everything defended and black wouldn't really have any uh, real threats. Uh, as it happened, my opponent ends up playing bishop c6 which gives me a chance to trade queens, which I immediately take. Knight takes c5, and now knight d4, and I'm just keeping the a pawn alive. And yeah, at this point, black was down to, I think, under under five minutes. He was definitely in heavy time trouble. Um, I was ahead of him for the most part. Like I had like 15, 20 minutes or so, but somewhere around here, I started going uh, all the way down because I was using all my time trying to figure out like how exactly to convert this position. Because um, I have this move like bishop a5, but then just bishop a7. And I was just trying to figure out how to break this blockade, what kind of pieces do I need to trade off, and, and so on. So I end up starting with bishop b4. And uh, the idea here is that I want to actually throw in bishop b5 at some point. And if I can get my knight to c6 and trade off the light squared bishops, then the a pawn will uh, promote. Um, but black stops me with e5. And then I go knight f3, f6. I throw in bishop c4 check. King f8, uh, and I decided to go for this plan knight e1, which I think was pretty solid. The point is just to try to trade off black's knight on c5, and then with the two bishops endgame, I felt like that was going to be really unpleasant for black. So king gate was played, knight d3, and then for example, if takes takes, what I kind of envisioned in my mind was that it was going to be really hard for black to deal with this pawn. Basically, black just has to keep it blockaded, but it's very difficult. It, it takes too many moves for black to try to like round up the pawn with the king and bishop. And if black tries to do that, then at some point I'm just going to play bishop f8 and just start taking stuff uh, on the king side. So at this point in my mind, I'm very much just thinking about uh, playing on two sides of the board, right? We have the outside pass pawn. And so this is just going to act as a decoy. Black has to keep this one under control. In the meantime, my real idea is to actually kind of start working on the king side and eventually using uh, the power of the active king to win on this side of the board. 
So that was kind of my, you know, uh, schematic thought process. And then bishop e6 happens. And all of a sudden, like so much stuff is hanging. Bishop on c4 is hanging. I burned all my time here looking for um, the cleanest way to proceed. Because I felt like, okay, it has to be a critical moment. The knight on c5 is hanging, but so is the bishop on c4. And if I take on c5, black takes here. I take on b6, black takes on d3. He's just in time to stop the pawn with bishop to e4. And yeah, I didn't really think that this uh, would be winning for white. I thought like, okay, I can try something like this e4, but then black will prepare like g6, f5, and yeah, I thought it's some chances with like the pawn advance so far, but with obstacle or bishops, I think you really, you really never know for sure, and yeah, I didn't want to walk into something where like I didn't know for sure I was winning with this extra pawn, so I kind of rejected all opposite color bishop endgames on principle, and uh, instead what I end up doing is I take on c5, bishop takes c4, I go knight to b2. Now this, I think, wasn't objectively the strongest, although it is good enough. Um, the engine suggests to give this check, and black has to go bishop to d7, otherwise knight on c5 would be hanging. Then to trade on d7, knight takes d7, and now to play for this kind of setup. So I can play like e4 here, for example, king to d8, black needs to try to go after the pawn, and bishop to d6. And this position, I just didn't really have time to fully uh, calculate and evaluate. But yeah, black is just completely stuck here. Like, there's just no way to make progress. This bishop on d6 is cutting the king, it's cutting the knight. And yeah, very, very difficult position for black. Uh, bishop c7, then there's a7, knight b6, bishop f8, and white just wins on the king side. Um, and so essentially black is just stuck, and then white can just slowly win the game by bringing in the king and yeah, going after the g7 pawn or bringing the king to the queen side and slowly breaking black's uh, blockade. But basically there's nothing to do. The king is just kind of stuck on c8, knight is stuck, and yeah, all of black's pieces are paralyzed. So I didn't fully quite visualize that one. And yeah, I decide to kind of simplify. I take on c5, bishop takes c4, knight b2. And uh, now bishop on b6 is hanging, so black has to take. I take on c4. And we end up in this endgame after king d7, where at first glance it looks like white is just losing the a6 pawn, and in indeed white is. Uh, but I felt like I should have enough time to start posing problems on the king side. So I was, I was really happy with my next move. I felt like it was very textbook, you know, Russian schoolboy. Uh, I go g4 here. So I'm just kind of fixing the king side and making sure that black is never able to kind of fix their pawn structure. If g6, h5, I'm always taking and leaving black with a weak pawn on the h-file. And yeah, by the time black's king is able to round up this pawn, my king uh, should be able to get closer to the king side, and my king and knight are going to be very, very dangerous on this one side of the board. So I felt like this should be winning, though things still get tricky. Uh, king c6, I played king g2, king b5. And now white has actually, I think, three choices here, and <laughs> I end up choosing the worst one. So um, the best option, which I, I just didn't realize was possible, because at this point we're both playing on the increment. We have like two minutes left, 30 second increment. So we're just kind of playing on instinct. Um, but the strongest was to start with knight d6 check. Uh, bishop can't take because a7, the pawn just runs. So king takes a6, uh, knight e8. And this one I just didn't really consider because I thought bishop f8 and the pawn is defended. And I, what I didn't see is that in this the final position, I have knight c7 check, knight e6. And then I'm hitting the bishop and I'm winning the g7 pawn. And after bishop e7, knight takes g7, this is a really big pawn for, for white to win. Because now the h pawn is still super weak and black's position here is just hopeless. The knight is just way too strong and the king will come in and take on h6. So that was, I think, by far the cleanest. I decide to start with a7, which is also good enough. Uh, forcing bishop takes a7, knight d6 check, king c6. Uh, and then I played knight f5 here. Now my first thought was that I should go knight e8. This is kind of the original idea. Now unfortunately for me, black king is a little bit closer, but I'm again winning one of these pawns, and uh, after something like g6, knight takes f6, this should be a winning endgame for white, because we picked up one pawn already, black's remaining pawns are very weak, the king has this like beautiful square on e4, the pawn on e5 is going to be weak, white just kind of maneuvers the knight, and yeah, very very difficult for black to hold this. Then at kind of the last second, I realized, well, I can also play knight f5 here. And then if g6, I have knight e7 check, and then I take the g6 pawn. And so thinking the two lines are basically the same, I decide to go knight f5. 
So again, attacking this one, expecting g6, knight e7, and then I take on g6, and white is golden. Uh, but then my opponent surprised me with g5, which I completely forgot about. Because now, okay, he lets me take on h6, but this is kind of like the worst the worst extra pawn I could have won, right? Because now it's very hard for me to make a pass pawn. Uh, black structure is still relatively solid. He has this like kind of one weakness on f6 that's hard to get to. And yeah, it would have been much better if I was able to take one of these GRF pawns and kind of split the rest of black's pawns because now his pawns remain connected and it's actually much harder for white to win this. So we end up here. He goes king to d5. And yeah, I immediately kind of panicked a little bit because I realized like, uh oh, I think I I, I might have just blown my advantage because I realized like, ooh, this <laughs> this doesn't look that convincing for white to win. But I, I try to keep the game going because I realized, okay, of course, white should still have really good chances. Uh, so I play knight to g8. I realize, okay, black wants to go e4 here. And I wanted to first tie the king down to the f6 pawn so that my king can use these light squares. I thought it was very important. If my king can get to e4, then one day I can give a check, force black's king off of the e6 square, get my king into f5, and then slowly just kind of uh, make progress and one day break through. So knight g8, king e6. Uh, I played king f3, bishop c5, knight h6. And uh, here, actually, my opponent, very surprisingly, ends up making the losing move. During the game, I, you know, I had no idea what's going on. I just thought, like, it's a very unclear position. Uh, White should have good winning chances, and that's it. I'm just going to play the position and, and try to win. Um, so he plays king to d5, and his idea is very clear. He wants to kind of force me to go e4 check and take the square away from my king. Otherwise, he's going to play e4, and then it'll be hard for White to make progress. And so, begrudgingly, I play e4 here. He goes back to e6. Uh, because if he tries to go active here, then knight g8 and the pawn is lost. But this turns out to be the key difference, which I thought was quite fascinating. Um, because if black had started instead with this move, bishop f8, which I think is very hard to figure out, but I, I just find it instructive, then I'm forced to go knight f5, and after king d5, again I'm forced to go e4 check, but here black can keep the king super active with king to c4, the knight is kind of dominated by the bishop, I don't have any knight g8 ideas, and here I think actually black is holding the draw because the king is just very active and it's really hard for white's king to, to get in. I think it's, I analyzed a little bit and I just couldn't find a way for, for white to win this position. So this ends up being a crucial difference because in the game black goes king d5 first, I go e4. Now he can't stay active because of knight g8 again. So he plays king e6 and he just tries to hold the position. But as it turns out, this end game is just not holdable. So it is uh, a win for white once white's king, I think, starts to get a little bit more active. And I felt like I, I, I had quite reasonable technique here. Um, so I'll kind of take you guys through how I ended up converting this one, because I had to figure out on 30 second increment, but fortunately for me, white's ideas were pretty straightforward. It wasn't that hard to figure out what to do. So my first plan was to just try to get the king in. And if black just lets me do whatever I want here, the goal is actually to get the king um, behind with king to e8, maybe even bring the king one day to g6, and then the knight is very good at kind of like maneuvering and boxing out the enemy king. And one day I actually want to put my king on f5. So I, f I felt like if I can get my king to f5, that's going to be winning. I'll be able to, to break through. Um, but okay, he definitely makes it hard for me. So king d7, king c4, king c6. And now I start uh, hopping around with the knight. And my idea is to just play knight before check and force the king to move. But it's not so easy. Because after bishop to c5, I realized, well, if I play knight b4, uh, black can actually trade this one and go king b6, and he has a drawn king and pawn endgame. And there's no way for white to break through. I can't lose a tempo. If I had like an extra move to play h3, then I can put black in Zugzwang and I would be winning. But no, it's just a draw. So I can't go knight b4 check. So I'm kind of scrambling and I start shuffling around looking for other ideas. Eventually, I realized the only way I can really make progress here is I have to get this h4 break in. It's just the only thing I can do to change the position. So I bring my knight to f5, I play h4, and we trade these pawns. It also resets the 50 move rolls. That's kind of good as far as the conversion is uh, concerned. Now from here, I realize the next step of my plan is to actually try to get the g5 break in. And this one is the one that really hurts black because for example, if I can put my knight on d3 and then get g5 in, Black is kind of forced to take, I win this e5 pawn, and then black's remaining g5 pawn is going to be a really big weakness. Not to mention, you know, I can create a pass pawn by winning the e pawn, but also that second g pawn uh, ends up being really, really weak. 
So once again, I um, revert to the old plan of bringing the knight to d3. And then the point of the knight on d3 is that I'm going to be threatening to go knight before check and uh, hoping to move black's king away. But I'm also going to be threatening to push g5 and uh, breaking down black structure. It's very difficult for black to defend against both threats. So he goes bishop f2, knight d3, uh, bishop e3, and now knight before check. And I start making progress this way. Had black not allowed this, like let's say black kept the bishop on this diagonal and, and done something like this, uh, then I think eventually uh, we can kind of force black into Zugzwang. It's a strong plan to bring the knight to d5. And here the knight on d5 is very good because it hits the bishop, it hits the pawn, and after bishop d8 I get my knight to b4 check. And then it's similar to the game, essentially white's king starts to make progress. Now the next knight is brought to c4, and I just kind of continually taking squares uh, away from black's king. So we get a similar thing in the game. Knight d3, bishop e3, knight b4, check, king d6, king b5. And yeah, now I'm just maneuvering with the knight uh, to harass black's king. So now the knight comes to c4, I now take away this square, king comes into c6. Now the next job is to bring the knight to the c5 square. And this was kind of the plan to just continually kick uh, black's king further and further away from the center. So bishop d4, knight d2. Bishop c3, knight b3, bishop b4, knight c5, check. Now the trade uh, leaves white with the more active king, and so this is a completely winning endgame. I'm always able to either bring in the king or play a move like g5 here, and then of course this one is an easy win with the super active king and the pass pawn. So black can no longer trade. Uh, he plays king f7, knight d3, bishop a3, king d5. And now white's king is basically in perfect position here. I think already at this point, I'm threatening to just go g5, takes, and then take the pawn. And then once again, black's remaining g pawn will be super weak, and white should win with the uh, two uh, e and f pawns. So king g6, king e6, I come in again, king to g5. Uh, black is just hoping for some counterplay at this point because he realized you know he's losing and he has to just look for any chance he can get. Uh, I come in with king to f7. And now black's king is basically in kind of like an eternal zugzwang. Because as soon as the king moves, I'm going to be taking this pawn or bringing my king to g6. And um, the main thing I realized after bishop d6, I start maneuvering the knight, is if black ever plays king to f4, which I thought was a very important point, I can just take here. And then after king takes f3, I just have a very important move, king f5. And now there's just like nothing black can do because I'm defending both pawns. The g pawn is, of course, threatening to just promote. And even if I didn't have the g-pawn, I can just go knight c4, knight takes e5, and black is never able to take on e5 because that's going to be a winning king and pawn endgame. So I'm winning the second pawn, winning the game, and yeah, black is just uh, having no counterplay here. So basically, I'm never afraid of king f4, which allows me to just move my knight freely, and I start maneuvering my knight um, towards uh, hitting this f6 pawn. So I, I think I aim to bring it either to d7 or e8, whatever I can get. Uh, bishop d4, knight d6, bishop f2, knight e8, and yeah, there's just no way for black to um to hold this position. Black could have like tried to keep the pawn like this, knight e8, and then bishop d8, um, but I think there's uh, lots of ways for uh, white to win here. Um, I think the engine points out that king g7 here is good enough. Um, I also think I can play... Um, a move like uh, knight g7 and then threatening knight e6. So yeah, this was ultimately not really going to hold for black. Um, so instead he goes bishop to f2, but now knight e8, bishop h4, and I'm able to just take on f6, and yeah, basically it's game over. Uh, king f4 was played, king e6, king takes f3, I can just take on e5, and uh, takes takes, black can take one of the pawns, but not the other, and one of them is just going to promote. Um, so yeah, after king e6, bishop g5 was played, but now it's just a matter of time, knight d7, bishop h4, knight takes e5. Once again, if king takes f3 was played here, then I wouldn't take this pawn, I would first start with king f5, and then I'm taking with the knight, and yeah, nothing black can really do. So bishop h4, knight takes e5, bishop d8, knight g6 check, king takes f3, finally forcing black to take this pawn, I get king f5 in. And uh, yeah, here black finally resigned as, yeah, there's just no counterplay. And um, I actually can just pre-move my next moves, just e5, e6, e7. And I'm winning the bishop, g-pawn is going to be defended. And yeah, nothing black can do. So 
yeah, 101 moves. Uh, I was pretty pumped to win this game, although it took um, the full time. It took the full five hours and there was only 30 minutes left before the next final round. Um, but I was happy that, you know, I definitely didn't play perfectly. I made tons of mistakes in the game, um, but I kept the pressure up. And even when we got to that, like, final end game with the knight versus bishop, I realized I kind of messed up and it might be drawish. You know, I just kept the energy up. I realized like I, sh I should still have good chances and I just focused on how can I improve my position? How can I keep trying to uh, create chances or trying to break through? Uh, and eventually I was able to kind of find the right plan. And I think that's important to do in those positions where if you're not really sure if you're winning or not, ultimately it doesn't really matter if the engine thinks you're winning. You just have to find a way to improve your position and try to convert it. The opponent will try to defend and you can just kind of see what happens. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I kind of uh, stuck this one out. It was a very tough game, but it's, I think, good overall for your chess to try to win and convert these positions uh, as often as you can and try to squeeze out as many points. Um, yeah, and so going into the final round, I was on five points uh, out of eight. And um, yeah, would probably need a win in the final round to get any kind of prize or anything like that. But first up, I had to just like rest and get something to eat because I was <laughs> pretty exhausted after this game. Um, but all right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.